what's the deal, and welcome back to a brand new discussion video, this time for the latest episode of My Hero Academia Season 3, Episode 9. And now, now the reason I'm making this video is actually after I watched uh, Chibi Reviews' uh, review on this week's episode. Um, it got me thinking, when he was talking about, you know, hero licenses, it got me thinking on how hero licenses, while we can all understand why they exist, are kind of a double-edged sword. Because... As he stated in his review... So, as we all know, anyone that doesn't have a license, like, if you don't have a hero license, you cannot use your quirk to do hero work. For instance, okay, let's say I had the quirk, like, you know, Izuku, super strength or whatever, okay? I had, you know, one for all. If I saw someone that was in trouble, and they were drowning, or a building was collapsing, and I could go in there and save them because I have the quirk to do it, I know I could do it, but because I don't have a license, I can't do that. I would get arrested, fined, or whatever, felony, whatever, okay? I would get in a lot of trouble if I was to do something like that. So, basically, society has been built in a way to where if you don't have a license, then you just leave well enough alone. If someone's in danger or hurt or whatever... You just let it be. You you, you look the other way. You turn the cheek, your cheek another way, and you let it wait for heroes to come in and save the day. And just like you said, turning the cheek is has, has constantly backfired for many heroes in both the Marvel and the DC universe, which you guys tell you can tell by the thumbnail. Is definitely what we're going to be comparing a lot to us review in this discussion field. Is definitely the comparisons between hero licenses and how you know you're supposed to say turn the other cheek because you don't have one just let the real heroes or the heroes take care of it has caused has really backfired for some of them and of course create some of the main, main uh, the many heroes that we have come to know and love today like as we know peter parker spider-man he his uncle ben died because he too turned the other cheek because he let his uncle just you know he let the robber at the wrestling at that wrestling you know um uh, organization he let him go just as a way to like you know prove a point as he said I missed the part where that's my problem. Which of course, after Peter's selfish action of not using his powers to take down this criminal, it led to the death of his Uncle Ben. And of course, after that moment, Peter learned the meaning of the phrase, With great power comes great responsibility. Which of course, after that fateful night, it drove Peter to of course become Spider-Man. And as, the re as they say, the rest is history. Which then leads us to our second hero that we are going to be comparing in this video, Batman. Now, as we all know, Bruce lost his parents in an alleyway um, to a mugger that have gone to a mug and gone wrong. And, of course, you know, which then led to, after watching his parents, both his parents die right from him, led him to, of course, you know, becoming Batman. And what is one of Batman's biggest motivations for becoming Batman? It is to make sure that another kid goes through what he went through. To, you know, not lose his parents in, a, in an alleyway. And like I said, like I said in this video, this is why you shouldn't turn the other cheek. Why, you know, if you have the, like, as now, like Chibi said in his review, that even if you don't have a, if you don't have a license, you're pretty much supposed to like, ah, oh, yeah, someone's getting mugged over there, yeah, let me just turn the other way, yeah, that's none of my business. Instead of you, like, just like him, but just like what happened with Peter. And I guess you can all say to extend to Batman, but then again, not really anyone was there. Like, there wasn't a Superman could just fly from the sky and be like, I am here, and you'll save the day, you know, all that shit. But you guys gotta get my point where I'm going at, you know, that when that, you know, someone that there's always someone who needs and why you should act on it and why you shouldn't just, and why you should say kind of just something, you know, fuck the government. Which, of course, then leads us to our... You know, our third hero that I want to like, come quickly to talk about is Captain America. Like, as we know about Captain America, the reason he became Captain America, or at least I should say join the military, was because he doesn't like bullies. He said this in the first Avenger, which, of course, you know, and as we know, if you guys saw Civil War, you guys know he pretty much was just telling the government to go fuck themselves with the super with the Superhuman Registration Act. So, and in another way, he was also, he was pretty much just telling them, you know, take your Superhuman Re Registration Act. And Turn that some sideways and stick it straight up, you candy which then leads us to the final character I really want to discuss in this, and that is, of course, of Shigaraki. Now, we also learn a little bit about Shigaraki's backstory in this episode, where we kind of know really his biggest motivation, how he knew how he knew one for all their first encounter, and why he said, I hate you, to all of them when he was, you know, of course, caught. 
as we know, la now, we, now as you guys know, season two, which by the way, this video will contain, you know, spoilers for season one, season, for like season two, and of course, this weekend. So if you have not seen Hero Walker, you're not caught up, you know, click off right now and just, you know, finish off. Go watch My Hero Academia because, goddammit, that watch it, read it, I don't care. This show is fucking amazing and you need to go watch it. So, as I was saying, we learned about Shigaraki's. Um, we learned a second in season two where it looks like Shigaraki might have killed his father with his quirk, because as we know, his quirk, if he puts all five fingers on something, it disintegrates. Kind of like Rogue from the X-Men universe, where she, if she touched anything, at least in the movies, because I know in the comics she, like, controlled it. She learned how to finally control it. Uh, in the movies, if she touches it, when she can, if she touches something for long enough, like Shigaraki, like his rust is, like his disintegration is, it, it takes like a couple seconds for it to, like, you know, disintegrate something. Like Rogue, if she touches someone for too long, um, she could kill him. And as we also know, she can also absorb other people's um, powers. Kind of like All for One can. Which you also find out that All for One to Ragdoll's quirk, which of course her quirk was search, which means, as we know, Ragdoll's quirk was that she can, you know, detect other people's weaknesses, which pretty much means whenever they're going to face off, unless he knows how to bash one for all by that point, he's fucking screwed. Yeah, that's going to be interesting when we get to that part. Uh, rest in peace, Decker, because you're, phew, you got a, you got a rude awakening come your way. When that comes like, phew, and ooh, like Chibi said in his review, this, what we got this week, is nothing. Like, what we're going to get in the next couple weeks of episodes is going to, like, blow our socks off. So I'm definitely very intrigued on what we have in store for us next week and the weeks after and the weeks coming for Hero Waka. Now, as I was saying, with Shigaraki, he, we find out why, now as we know and learned in season two, he possibly could have killed his father. Like we know when he turned, when, you know, Bako took the glove off his face and, you know, laid on the floor, he looked at it and said, Father, before he, you know, put it back on his face. So we could, so we can at least theorize that maybe uh, when Shigaraki's quirk first materialized, kind of like how Rogue's also, for, when her mute uh, power finally, you know, uh, woken, she could have possibly killed her father, or his father, his dad, Rogue, almost, and put his her boyfriend in a coma in the first X-Men movie. So, and like, and where, and because of that, he was pretty much left on the street, because we don't know what happened with his mother and all that shit. He was left on the street, and probably, like Chibi Review said in his video, they kind of just let you, just like, you know, just land there. And then when All for One said, uh, All for One saw him, he said this. No one's come to save you, have they? You've had a hard life, Tenko Shimura. He'll be fine. Eventually, the heroes will help. I'm sure that's what everyone thought as they looked away and ignored you. The world shouldn't be so unforgiving. You didn't do anything wrong. Don't worry, I am here for you. Which made me remember about the backstories and the motivations between um, two of my favorite characters from the X-Men universe, Professor X and Magneto. Because if you guys saw First Class, as was the first X-Men movie, you X-Men movie, you guys know really the motivations between these two characters. Charles Xavier created his school for gifted youngers as a safe haven for mutants, as a way for him to like, you know, help out, you know, mutant people have them control their have them control their power and, you know, try to live a normal life with the help of these extra abilities that they have. So while as of course we also saw with Magneto when he, he was like, you know, locked up in the concentration camps, um, with Nazi Germany. So he saw the worst of humanity, which of course led him down the path to Project Zero Mortals. No, Zamasu, led it, which led him to create the Brotherhood. It's kind of as like, of course, you know, take to get rid of humanity because he thinks that they are, that there's no way for them changing because of like he said, he saw the absolute worst of humanity when he was knocked up in those concentration camps, not sure, and. And just like Shigaraki, who was left alone, probably just left on the street while other people were just kind of like turned the other way, turned their cheek, and just said, oh, you know, the heroes will come and save it, can no, no reason for me to get involved. Which, of course, led to Shigaraki being what he's had, you know, say, someone led in, someone gave him a helping hand that wasn't, you know, the fucking main villain of the series, all for one, and maybe just a normal random, just some random person, like, you know, the Kens for Clark Kent and Superman. And, you know, uh, no, and, uh, or just anyone really at that point, to, you know, help out Shigaraki and, you know, to have him, like, you know, put him down right now instead of, you know, all for one, kind of, like, you know, taking him and, you know, conforming him to becoming the, um, his successor. 
what's what's thinking me of what's about that about you know turning it, it also reminded me of two scenes from two of my personal favorite superhero movies of characters that I have really no business save that getting involved into something but still did it anyway and I'm of course referring to the bus scene in Man of Steel and of course the burning apartment scene in Spider-Man 2 now because as we know in, in Man of Steel, he was on this bus, but a deep. But as you know, it kind of just swerved off this bridge, and then and all the kids there were drowning. But Clark, of course, you know him being Superman all that well before it became Superman. He you know got involved and saved everyone on the bus. And of course, you know there's the infamous scene where you know Kent said you know where he, Clark said you know what should I have done? Just let him die. And he says you know maybe you know. And of course in um, Spider-Man Two. We learned, we know that, you know, when Peter lost, even though he lost his powers, he still got into that burning apartment building to save that little girl, that little girl, like, you know, like, what was it, like, the eighth floor or something, and, you know, saved her, you know, and, but that's what drive him to finally, you know, go back to being Spider-Man, gain back his powers after he lost them for some unexplained reason that I don't understand why no one talks about that scene, but whatever. Yeah, um, so yeah, guys, that's kind of like the end of this discussion video. I just wanted to really talk about, you know, why, you know, even though I understand why Hirowaka does have, you know, these hero licenses, and I understand the point of them, like, you need some way to regulate the guys, of course, not having you just be the wild fucking West, the wild West up in here. Uh, it's the same time it can be double-star, because you're telling them pretty much, you know, just to say, even though you may have the court to, like, you know, stop that guy getting mugged or that woman getting raped, you're supposed to just turn the other cheek and just let it happen and hope that God a hero shows up before, you know, something really bad happens, you know, which, I mean, at the same time, but, no, great, from what the anime has really explained, it doesn't, there doesn't seem like to be like some loophole that, oh yeah, if you save someone when there's no heroes in the vicinity, you're good. Because just see, if you use them at all, like even if you're saving, a, even if you're saving someone's life, you're still either gonna get like you know arrested or fired or be a convicted felon. Like we don't, we, we don't know really the logistics of you know how this happens. Of like the logistics of you know not of you know, using your quirks even though you don't have a hero license. I mean, sure, Deku and T and uh, ba Ida and um, Toru got uh, got chewed out by you know the commissioner of the police force in season two, where after you know everything that happened was stayed. But we don't know what happens if normal people do that, you know? Uh, see, tell me what you guys think about Hero Lights. Do you think they have a perp? Do you think they, um, do you think they should exist? Do you understand? Or do you think, like, you're kind of like me, where you're kind of like, I understand why they're there, but I hope there's, like, a loophole? Or you think, no, 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 Hero Lights should never be a thing. People should be able to use their quirks whenever they can, and whenever it's especially necessary to say when it could be a life or death situation to save someone's life. So yeah, guys, tell me all that in the comments below. So and also and also, guys, I gotta say, after watching this week's episode uh, and a few of the other episodes of my of season three, I gotta say, I want these guys in the MCU more than ever. Now I've always now I even made a whole video about how to bring Hirowaka into the MCU. Go check that out if you have. I'll probably have it up in the eye. I'll have it in the, uh, in the up in the eye cards above. But yeah, I like uh, I love this series to death, and I and like the parallels I've noticed is it shares with you know Marvel, DC. I just want to see these guys interacting with the Avengers and shit. Like I want these guys in there more than I want DC, and I want DC in the MCU. I want to see the Justice League versus the Avengers in live action, goddamn. But I but if you told me like hey, if you like locked me in a room and I had two buttons, one that says like my hero game gets brought into the MCU, or just or the DCE or the DC universe gets brought into the MCU, I'm picking the Hero Waka option because. I want to see those guys interact with the Avengers because, like, you know, the similarities the show shares with Marvel and all that shit. So, yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Phil. At least I'll stress below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.